gonna do right here is go back. Bring that beat back. One, two, three, four. So the guy you see here is Keith Herring, and he's who we're gonna be learning about for our next project. He was born on May 4th, 1958 in Reading, Pennsylvania. And unfortunately he died in February of 1990. Keith Haring was highly influenced by the street culture of New York City in the 1980s. He was a graffiti artist to start with. He'd go down into the subways, find blank billboard areas and use chalk to make these quick images these were like symbols that represented his emotions and feelings about life, death, love, reality. And these were basically modern day cave paintings. Herring's artwork was often heavily political and his imagery has widely become recognized as a visual language of the 20th century. The image he called the Radiant Baby became a symbol that represented him. The Radiant Baby was used in lots of his artwork. He became known for his bold lines, the vibrant colors he used, and the active figures that are featured in most of his works. Do, do you sign your work? Um, no, the things in the subway are never signed. Because you don't because want anybody the work, looking for Well, the thing. drawing itself is a signature. I mean, I most people can tell that the same person has done yeah. all the drawings. But if you don't sign it, how do they know who did it, and how do you get discovered? Um, well, uh, most of the people in, in the subway probably still don't know who, who's doing them. Mm -hmm. but, um, and that's probably the best way to come across them, is to just see them and not know how they got there or why they got there. Um, but at the same time that I was doing things in the subways, I began showing things in galleries and um, things in the press and things. Being a graffiti artist isn't all glamorous. Sometimes he even got arrested for the work that he made. He said that depended on the cop, sometimes he would just get a $10 fine, sometimes he'd be in jail overnight. But he said it was worth it to be able to get the visions of the images he wanted to share out to the people. He wanted to break the barriers between high art and low art and make art for everyone. Birth, death, love, war. These simple, almost primitive images appeal to a wide range of people. The variety of people that were seeing the work brought with it a variety of of responses and variety of different ideas about what the work was. His artwork didn't stay in the subways forever. Eventually he got gallery shows and even is in some museums. His work is featured in murals in cities all over the world. Paris, London, Brazil. By 1985 his work started to spring up around the world, crossing national and social boundaries. His work became a public voice for the young generation. Haring's work was simple and bold, instantly recognizable and easy to reproduce. Inevitably, the media caught on. By 1982, Keith Haring had made some pretty impressive friends, including Madonna. Madonna asked Herring to create the sets and some of the costumes for one of her tours, which made him even more of a pop artist. With formal recognition from the art world and continuous media attention, Herring became a star. At a certain point, it was almost like it was bigger than I was, where I was sort of almost riding it like a horse or something, or trying to guide it or steer it in a direction, um, but at the same time that it was taking me. Keith Haring had been inspired by the pop artist like Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol had taken popular items in culture and created high art with it, which is something that had never been done before the pop art movement. Andy Warhol became fascinated with the Haring phenomenon and befriended the young artist. In 1986, Haring followed Warhol into the world of commercial art when he was commissioned to do an advertisement for Absolute Vodka. Other corporations took note of his work. Here you see Swatch watches, which were a fashion mainstay in the 1980s. 
that had his artwork on them. Does this image look familiar? Herring's trademark images were often used in advertisements for popular products. In 1986, he opened a shop of his own. The pop shop opened in Lower Manhattan. A wide range of herring merchandise became available to shoppers of every kind. Yeah, I would like to get the bounce Black shirt. I like what he draws. I think it's cool. Some critics called it a sellout. The pop shop was more really a response to what was already happening in the world than it was something that was just an idea that was initiated on my part. I mean, the pop shop sort of grew naturally out of what the work was becoming anyway. The images had become part of the world. Keith Haring also used his images to give voice to important social issues. He was an activist for AIDS awareness, and here you see an example of one of his images from that campaign. Sadly, AIDS is what took Keith Haring from the world. He also used his artwork to speak out against drug abuse. Here you see the Crack is Whack mural, which is a famous piece he did in New York City on FDR Boulevard which is now a landmark. That, that there's a lot of information that's really important to, to be passed on to people and that if it's done in a way that's, that's interesting or is good quality, then it makes people even more interested in the thing that they're seeing or that they're learning. A lot of my quote-unquote introduction into the, the commercial side of things has been totally misunderstood and misrepresented by, um, by especially by art critics or by sort of critics at large. I mean, people don't understand that there could possibly be any other motivation to do something that reaches a lot of people or to communicate on a, on a, on a, in a different way, in a new medium, in a new technique. Keith Haring used something called semiotics in his work. Semiotics is an investigation into how meaning is created and how meaning is communicated. Its origins lie in the academic study of how signs and symbols, visual and linguistic, create meaning. It is a way of seeing the world and of understanding how the landscape and culture in which we live has a massive impact on all of us unconsciously. Some of the artwork by Keith Haring had hidden meaning and messages in it. Can you figure out what he might have been meaning in this painting? Why would the dog be barking at the man at the Times Square station and worshipped as an idol at 14th Street? If there was a secret behind the subway drawings, it was semiotics, the theory of signs. At the School of Visual Arts, Haring studied semiotic theory and discovered that images can function like words. He uses images to create a language, like words in a sentence. The meaning of each symbol varies depending on how it is combined with other symbols. The drawings had become almost a vocabulary. There were flying saucers, there were pyramids, um, th things like this glowing rod that sort of was an archetypal, an archetypal weapon. I mean, it was anything from the, the sword and the stone to Darth Vader's um, you know, glowing rod. It sort of had this, this timeless, universal kind of thing where I was trying to, I think, use things that cut through all of, all of culture and all of history. Once I started to realize that exactly how I was communicating, I started to be much more aware of what I was communicating and, and really trying to sort of be more in touch with what exactly was going back and forth. And not, not so much just putting out abstract thoughts, but really trying to guide people to see particular things and starting to, to deal with more social concerns. Keith Haring, a loner in the art world, but not to the rest of the world. Keith Haring, a stubborn optimist about life, about art, about people. If you love life, if you appreciate life and humans, then you should be against anything that's going against life and against people. I mean, when something is that obviously wrong, you have to be against it. You know, and I think it's partly responsibility, but it's partly just a natural response to, to 
seeing something that's wrong and wanting to to say something about it or do something about it.